He is the man behind the G.I. Joe and Bucky O'Hare comic book characters and adventures. Hi, I'm Rebecca Brayton and welcome to WatchMojo.com. And today we're speaking with comic book writer and artist Larry Hama. Why don't you tell us a bit about how you originally broke into the comic book industry? I worked as an assistant for a, a, a really well-known comic artist named uh, Wally Wood back in the 70s. You know, that was the way it used to be. You started out working as somebody's assistant and it was sort of like the old uh, apprenticeships. I made all my contacts through him and that's how I got into business. You've worked with a number of different characters. Is there one that's closest to your heart? It's a real toss up between Snake Eyes and Wolverine. You know, different aspects of my fantasy life. <laughs> because the most important fantasy to me is, is about the, the integrity of the character and their sense of uh, moral justice. And uh, I, I think this is really appealing to kids. You know, who, you know, the universe is very unfair to their point of view. <laughs> you know, it's like you're a little kid and everybody tells you what to do and nothing seems fair. I think that's what made Superman work. You know, it wasn't the fact that he could fly and jump over buildings. You know, the fantasy that worked, I think, was that everybody that, that, that looked at Superman realized that in any given ethical situation, he would make the correct ethical choice. When you think about that from a kid's point of view, that's a really powerful fantasy. And the fantasy of the camaraderie. You know, that's what makes the X-Men work, that's what makes G.I. Joe work, that's what makes Harry Potter work. Let's talk about Bucky O'Hare a bit. I mean, how did you orig how did that character originate? I was working at DC Comics and they said that we could create stuff and we'd own a big piece of it and they would publish it. So I worked this whole thing up, you know, and they said, well, you know, hand it in. And I said, well, where's my contract? And they never came up with the paperwork. And my lawyer said, you know, a spoken agreement is worth the paper it's written on. I walked away with it and uh, Neil Adams, who's a really big time comic book artist, said he would publish it. And I got a nice share of the rights. That's sort of like my take on what I really had wanted to do. I mean, I got into the comic book business because I wanted to do funny animals and, and ducks, and um, nobody was buying any of that at that time. You know, it was all superheroes. So I had to do superheroes, and then this chance came along to do uh, what I really wanted to do. Let's talk about G.I. Joe. I mean, how can we not talk about G.I. Joe? Why don't you tell us a bit about how that originated and, you know, how the, the characters, how you came up with the characters. I heard that some of the, the names, at least, or the characters are based on people that you know and celebrities. Well, a lot of the characters are people I know. I'd actually been in the Army, but it had been in such a long while that you know, everything was sort of obsolete that I knew, so I had to, like, look everything up anyway, but I understood the dynamics of how camaraderie works in the military and what, you know, people really believe. You know, you will lay down your life for them and they will do the same for you, you know, but there's no abstractions there about, you know, ideology or anything. It's all strictly personal. You know, even in, th in this sort of fantastic environment, as long as they behave like real people and relate to each other as real people, that works. And I never cared about plot. When I was writing 155 issues of the comic, I just made it up as I went, page by page, literally. I, I had no idea what the next story was going to be about. Thank you very much. This well, thank you.